So we've talked a lot about the benefits of feedback control over something like open loop. Uh, and in particular, we listed them before as stability. So it's possible with uh, feedback of your system to change the eigenvalues, to design the eigenvalues of your closed loop system. For example, to stabilize an inverted, uh, an unstable system like the inverted pendulum. Uh, but we also said that one of the benefits of feedback is uncertainty uh, in the plant. So if I have some uncertainty in my model for my system, open loop is going to be pretty bad and it's not going to take into account any measurements to correct that uncertainty. Whereas feedback will use measurements of the output of the system to correct the feedback if I have an uncertain model. Uh, and it's also useful if there are disturbances. So if my system's actively being kicked or pushed in a way that's hard to predict, then closed loop uh, measurement-based feedback control is going to be better than open loop. And so we've spent a lot of time talking about stability in the context of linear quadratic regulators and Kalman filters, but we haven't talked so much about um, uncertainty and disturbances. So I'm going to cook up a really simple example system today that motivates the benefits of feedback over open loop control when you have a system that has uncertainties and disturbances. So the simplest model that we're going to be working with is essentially a cruise control model. Okay, so the automobile um, cruise controller. Uh, and so the idea here is that U is essentially how much gas I give the car, or maybe gas and brake. Um, and then Y is the speed of the car. And I might want to track a reference speed. So let's say I set my cruise controller at 60 miles per hour. I want my controller to, to track um, 60 miles per hour, despite uh, if my model of the car is bad and if I have disturbances like, like hills. Okay, so we're going to be doing uh, a cruise controller for a car. And the car could be on some rough terrain where there might be disturbances. Okay, so I think of, um, for example, if there are rolling hills and I'm trying to track a speed, those are like disturbances that are going to add and subtract velocity um, that open loop control wouldn't know about. Also, if there's high winds or, you know, if my tires are a little bit miss out of alignment, that could be a disturbance or a model uncertainty. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is think about what is our nominal model for, for the system. And a really crude model for your car could be that y equals, let's say, 2 times u. Now, I haven't given this any units and... Um, you know, but let's say I measure that if I put my foot down one unit of gas, I get two units of speed out. So I put it down a little bit and I get a certain amount of, um, of steady state speed on a flat, uh, flat road. Okay, so this is essentially my model. Now let's think about what open loop control would do uh, to solve a reference tracking problem. So what is u open loop. Okay, so let's define a few variables. Let's say that I have some, uh, some reference r, some reference speed that I'm trying to track. Okay, what does open loop control do? So if I want y to equal r, with open loop control, I'm going to say, okay, what is u equal? u equals uh, r divided by 2. That's the open loop model. Because I know that if I put in r over 2 into my model, I get out y equals r, which is what I want. I want my output velocity. Let's say this is the actual speed. Let's say this is gas and brake. Uh, whoop, brake, B-R-A-K-E. Uh, then the open loop strategy, not knowing anything about disturbances, just based on my model, would be Take the reference velocity that you want to be going and divide by 2 because my model amplifies u by a factor of 2. Okay, that's the open loop. Now, this is a pretty bad uh, controller for a lot of reasons. So, namely, uncertainty in the model and disturbances. So, if my model was actually y equals u, let's say this was an old car, maybe um, I need to clean my fuel injector, my, my fuel injectors and my tires are slightly out of alignment. Maybe the pressure in my tires is a little deflated. 
um, maybe my car is inefficient and y is actually just equal to u, so it's like half as punchy as my model started out, then my open loop control is not going to get me nearly to my desired speed r, it's going to get me to r over 2. So if the actual system differs from this model, my open loop control has no way of correcting for that. Moreover, if I have, um, let's say that I have my actual model, uh, I'll write that here. So true model is uh, y equals 1 times u plus disturbance. Okay, so this is my model for the car. This is what my uh, true, let's say true car, not true model. This is my true automobile, my true car. So if my model is y equals 2u, so I have a bad model and I don't take into account disturbances, then open loop gives me this controller. But if my true car model is y equals u plus d, notice that uh, y open loop is equal to my reference speed over 2 plus disturbances. Okay, So I have the wrong... I, I'm only tracking 50% of my reference velocity, and all of the disturbances pass right through to my actual speed y. So if I'm on rolling hills, my open loop controller doesn't take that into account at all. Okay. So what do we do in practice? So in practice, what we do is we close the loop. Okay, and we, we all know this at this point. So what we do is we close the loop with some controller k. And what we do is we say, I'm going to measure the actual speed of my car. So if I'm on this rolling hill and I'm speeding up, I'm going to measure that in y. I'm going to feed that back, and I'm going to subtract it from my reference speed. And the, the difference of those two is going to be some error signal epsilon. Okay? And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to choose k to make epsilon small. Okay? This is essentially proportional feedback control. So I'm going to just call this uh, proportional feedback. It's proportional because k is just a number. It's like a constant times epsilon, so it's proportional to the error. And feedback, because I'm measuring y and feeding it back uh, to get this measured error epsilon. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually compute what is the true y closed loop with this feedback law. And we're going to write it down as a function of reference and disturbance. Okay, so remember, the true car is y equals u plus d. And now that I wrap this feedback around, we're going to say y equals, um, and let's say that the true car is, there's some uh, plant model, some transfer function model, which is, I'm going to call it p. And I'm keeping this pretty vague. Here p is a number. It literally means in reality, y is 1 times u, but later we're going to replace this with a transfer function. We're going to allow this to have some dynamics. Maybe y, you know, has there's some time delay from when I hit the gas to when the car speeds up. Okay, so, but I'm keeping it vague. p is just a symbol here. k also, you know, is going to be a number now, but we can make it have dynamics later. And so I'm going to write down a couple of, a couple of uh, math facts. Um, so u closed loop, u closed loop is equal to k times epsilon, k times my error, which I can also write as k times r minus y. Pretty straightforward, okay? And then I can say that y closed loop is equal to p times u, so I pass u through p, p times u, which equals p times all of this stuff, okay? Uh, and it equals p times u plus disturbance. Remember, we still have disturbances. So somewhere in here, uh, there's, a, there's a d that's getting added in. We have a disturbance that's coming into the system. Okay, so now the trick is we're going to solve for the y closed loop as a function of r and d, and we're going to see how this proportional feedback brings y closed loop close to the desired reference, even if my model was bad and I have disturbances. Okay, 
So uh, doing this, I'm going to plug this expression for u into u here. And I'm going to get uh, that this equals p times k times r minus p times k times y plus d. And this is y closed loop, so let's not drop the closed loop. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of my y closed loops over to the same side and solve for y closed loop. So I'm going to have identity matrix. Sorry, this is one in this case because it's a single system. But in the multiple input, multiple output, that would be identity matrix. 1 plus pk times y closed loop equals pk times my reference plus my disturbance. Okay, and the last thing I have to do is just solve for y closed loop equals pk over 1 plus pk times the reference. Let me switch to something brighter here. Plus 1 over 1 plus pk times the disturbance. Okay? So this term tells me how good my y output, my output speed, matches my reference speed. And this term tells me how much disturbances get uh, reduced by effective control. OK, so now remember, the model for p was that p equals 2. So the model, uh, so model p equals 2. But the true car system had p equals 1. OK, and remember, open loop just uh, inverts this p and finds the u that would, uh, that would give you the perfect reference tracking if the actual car acted like the model. So notice here that if my p is not what I think it should be, then I can still get away with having a really big proportional feedback k and making this thing look like 1. So we want this to look like 1. We want this to equal 1. Because if this equals 1, then we have really good reference tracking. Then my output speed equals my reference speed. And we want this to equal 0. Because if I have a disturbance, I want whatever feedback multiplying it to make this as small as possible. And so you'll see pretty quickly that the best way to make this as close to 1 and this as close to 0 is a really big K. So big K works. That's the, the upshot, is that if I choose K really, really large, let's say K equals 100, so if k equals 100, then I have something like 100 divided by 101. This is really close to 1. So this is only off. My, my actual speed is only off by, from my reference speed by about 1%. And I've reduced disturbances by about a factor of 100, 1 over 101. Okay, So I've reduced my disturbances by a factor of 101. And my true speed is tracking my reference speed uh, very close, within 1%. So in contrast, remember, my open loop controller was off by 50%. The reference track, the reference velocity was off by 50% because my model was bad, and my disturbance wasn't reduced at all. So for example, if I have this rolling hill here, all of that rolling hill is going to pass directly into my speed. I'm going to speed up and slow down and speed up and slow down if I just hold my foot at a constant amount of gas. But if I measure my speed and I feed that back and I, I pump out gas based on the difference between my speed and the desired speed, I can speed up on the downhills and I can break, sorry, I can speed up on the, the uphills and I can break on the downhills and I can maintain within 1% uh, of my desired reference, reference speed. Okay? Um, so this is an example where we can handle model uncertainty and disturbances by taking measurements and feeding them back in proportional control. OK, so in the next video, we're going to take this exact same system and we're going to code it up in MATLAB uh, with some numbers and we're going to plot and show that closed loop gets much, much closer than open loop uh, to the desired reference speed. All right, thank you.